Let's talk about the announcement of student loan debt forgiveness. If you haven't heard or read about it already, on Wednesday, Joe Biden announced that he would forgive up to $10,000 in federal student loan debt for millions of Americans and up to $20,000 for Pell Grant recipients amounting to roughly a total cost of around $230 billion. Those who qualify are limited to borrowers making less than $125,000 per year or $250,000 for married couples filing together or heads of households. I also want to mention that the outstanding student loan debt is $1.6 trillion spread out among 45 million Americans. I know what you may be thinking, does this mean that there is now a debt crisis? Will this affect the economy? And of course, how will this affect the deficit? The short answer to those questions is no, probably not by much, and it's complicated. Let me explain. But before I do, I want to let you guys know that Joe Biden also announced that if you hit that like and subscribe button, in addition to your student loan debt, your credit card debt will also be forgiven. So make sure to smash that like and subscribe button. Other than that, enjoy the video and let's get right into it. First, Joe Biden's proposal does not include private student loans, only federal student loans. So this is not a debt crisis. This is intended to relieve those with a federal student loan. Those with forgiven debt will have more money to spend, which can help stimulate the economy. However, this does go both ways because this will encourage spending to increase among those forgiven, potentially pushing inflation higher. In the long term, it is difficult to say it is possible that this could lead to more people attending college and taking on more debt, which would then need to be forgiven in the future. Only time will tell. And finally, the deficit. How will this affect the deficit? Well, it's complicated. The federal government will lose out on revenue from student loan payments that are no longer being made. However, forgiven debt is not counted as revenue. So while while this will have an impact on the deficit, it's hard to say exactly by how much of an impact it will have. The White House said that 43 million student loan borrowers will benefit and that as many as 20 million borrowers will have their full remaining student loan balances wiped out. The money that's being forgiven is not wiped out, it just means that now the US government is the borrower and the debt has changed hands. There are two camps in light of this recent news. Critics of the plan argue that it would be unfair to those who have already paid off their loans or who are close to doing so. People are saying that this is essentially a slap in the face for those who did not attend college. Those against it also argue that it would encourage people to take on more more debt that they can afford, knowing that they may not have to repay it. Supporters of the plan argue that it would provide relief to millions of Americans who are struggling to repay their loans, and that it would boost the economy by freeing up money that borrowers would otherwise have to put towards their loans. Some also argue that this is not a huge benefit in the long run and does not prevent the rising cost of education. One has to choose between debt relief and addressing the high cost of college, an overwhelming majority between borrowers and non-borrowers alike said they wanted colleges to help fix this issue. And according to an analysis by the Department of Education of a recent cohort of undergraduates, nearly one third of borrowers have debt, but no degree. In March 2020, Donald Trump signed the CARES Act, which paused federal student loan payments through September 2020 and stopped interest from accruing to alleviate the economic impact of the coronavirus pandemic. Trump later took executive action to extend the deferral period through January 2021. Since taking office, Biden has issued five more extensions, meaning that federal student loan holders have not required to make payments for over a year now. Now let's go into to the taxation details. Does the forgiven debt count as taxable income? The Biden administration has yet to elaborate on how this will affect borrowers, but it seems that they may need additional steps taken at tax time. This is because when lenders typically forgive $600 or more in student loans and those forgiveness amounts are taxable, then 1099Cs are sent out with details about the canceled debt. Some states automatically conform to federal rules, but others may count the forgiven balance as income, meaning that it's still possible you'll have a bill. What can taxpayers expect due to student debt forgiveness? Well, you can expect a knock on the door from your favorite visitor that will be coming back for seconds. The cost of this policy for each taxpayer would be about $2,085.59 over a period of 10 years and is based on data from the Penn Wharton budget model, which found that the total cost of the proposal could be $329.1 billion over 10 years based on $10,000 in forgiveness for borrowers with less than $125,000 in income. 87,000 new IRS agents will be hired to enforce new regulations. To put this in perspective, that's about the size of Jordan's active military or a full Dallas Cowboys stadium, which seats about 80,000 people. This occupation will be more common than real estate agents. Jokes aside, auto Audits among lower income and higher income taxpayers will increase. The new law says the IRS is supposed to use the money in these ways. Taxpayer services, $3.2 billion. Enforcement, $45.6 billion. Operations support, $25.3 billion. Business systems modernization, $4.8 billion. Task force to design free direct e-file system, $15 million. Treasury inspector general for tax administration, $403 billion. Treasury office of tax policy, $104 million. Tax court, $153 million. Treasury departmental offices for oversight and implementation support to help the IRS implement the IRA, $50 million. The government is investing more money to collect taxes and to increase its staff to help cover the traffic they get from people with questions. The IRS has already projected that adding this new funding will pay off with an additional $124 billion collected over a period of 10 years. I would love to hear what you guys think about this, so please don't hesitate to comment your thoughts down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.